Hi and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex Technical and Fundamental Analysis. My name is Leon Rowe and I'm a currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and if you're new, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back and I really do hope that you find every week my supply and demand and fundamental analysis useful in your trading. I've been getting a lot of positive messages um, over the past few weeks, actually the past few months, um, and I thank you for all of them. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find you know the content um, you know uh, uh, valuable as well and uh yeah let's basically get into it and we start off as we always do on the fundamentals and sentiment analysis so uh in the week ahead uh what we've got is uh final estimates of us second quarter gdp growth and that will definitely be watched alongside personal income and out outlays pce price index which is i think the feds federal reserves um preferred measure of inflation so that will be important and why is that important because then it um, basically sets the kind of monetary policy tone as we know um, last week the federal reserve ended up um, cutting rates this is from a reuters article and the fed cut rates but signals holding pattern for now so they weren't uh, too dovish um you know, in their in their uh, in their announcement, um, hence the reason why I had a an email from somebody asking me to explain why a cut didn't have a negative effect on the uh, the dollar, and for several reasons. But one of the reasons is sometimes not the cut itself, you know, because that will probably already be factored in in the uh, um, buy the rumor sell the fact kind of thing um, but also it depends on the actual statement and uh, future guidance on how many cuts are potentially coming in the future yeah so if they started announcing you know more than expected that would be quite dovish and but if they're uh, quite tight-lipped on you know future cuts or if they're going to be any more cuts at all then that would be considered quite hawkish and uh, signals holding pattern for now holding meaning that they uh, you know they're not talking about cutting for now so um, a decent article if you can uh, uh, look it up or what I'll do is I'll if I remember after this video to put the link in the description box below so you can have a read so um, what else have we got this week so we've got durable goods orders and pending home sales elsewhere important releases include uk cbi factory orders eurozone business survey and monetary indicators germany consumer morale um you know the eurozone is is, is suffering a bit at the moment um economically and especially germany being europe's powerhouse um, isn't doing it too well at all and uh when it comes to the eurozone inflation you know confirmed at low of one percent in august hence the um the the stimulus basically that they introduced uh, mario draghi introduced to um basically uh, try to cheapen the currency um you know to stimulate inflation if you know how uh, a weak currency um, the effect of inflation um or weak currency has on on, the, on inflation right so they need their two percent target and um uh, so the european central bank has to kind of cheapen their currency as they're out of uh, interest rate cut bullets because they don't have any interest rates they are actually at zero i, I guess they could you know uh, um uh, go into negative interest rates but they decided to add stimulus instead so the euro economy not doing very well at all um germany consumer morale and china industrial profits policy decisions in the philippines new zealand yeah that's going to be important as well and thailand uh, will also be in a spotlight as well as flash pmi surveys for the us eurozone japan and australia and just catching up on a bit of uh, news as well a bit more pound rally fizzles as ireland put stamper on brexit hopes if you are trading the british pound it's going to be very volatile as we move closer to the october 31st deadline um and that is due to um you know where a decision has to be made or whether you know the uk are going to leave with a 
deal or no deal Brexit, yeah? So I've been saying this to, you know, the guys in the Telegram group, and I said this, um, you know, um, quite a few weeks ago, and I was saying that um, if, if the pound will rally based off of um, a no deal being taken off the table, basically, if the, the scenario looks like there's more likely to be a deal on the table, the pound will rally. If there's no deal looking like it's going to be, you know, the likely outcome, then the pound is going to drop. Um, so uh, what you what you saw this week is a pound rally because I think it was, uh, what's his name, Jean-Claude Juncker, I think that's his name, um, came out and said, yeah, here you go, um, currency retreats from two-month high fueled by EU Juncker's um, uh, comments and saying that a deal, um, they want to do a deal. So um, there are negotiations and Sterling may rise 5% if deal clinched. Yes, yeah, it's BNY Mellon. Melon's Dar, right? So keep that in mind. Again, I'll put this um, in the uh, description box below. Um, but you, uh, I think you get two or three limited articles if you're not a Bloomberg subscriber. Um, also, quickly, just to cover um, Bank of Japan, um, basically they had their um, rate um, uh, announcement as well and they keep the policy steady but signals a chance of easing in October right so potential easing coming in october and easing uh, basically stimulus means that they want to weaken their currency right um and the bank of japan um is uh is uh, i think they're quite keen on doing that um the the more expensive the uh, japanese yen gets right so uh, again just keep that in mind they are trying to reach their inflation targets but um the 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 more expensive the Bank of Japan um, or the, the, the yen gets, the further away they're getting from their 2% inflation target. Anyways, um, let's get into the technicals because I know that's what you guys are here for as well. So starting off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index. And what we have, let's move this up a little bit, right, um, is last week, we had price come down into here and I was actually expecting price to not really hold at this demand zone simply because there was um, an interest rate cut. But if we go forward a little bit over the past five days, the dollar index, which is a measure of dollar strength against uh, some of the major currencies like the pound, the euro and the yen um, kind of held up as I guess the uh, the tone of the Federal Reserve was actually not as dovish as uh, the market expected. So um, with that being said, moving to the actual chart, nothing really has changed um, on this, uh, on the dollar index chart. Um, I do expect though, um, the dollar uh, at some point potentially, again, we can go either way, but um, maybe some sort of weakness. And if it does weaken down into this uh, demand zone, this fresher area of demand, then I'll be a buyer. At the moment, the dollar is, you know, the strongest. Uh, the dog with the least fleas. Um, it's use a, I guess, a metaphor, and um, you know, it it could obviously, you know, go to the upside. I'm a buyer of the dollar. I have been for quite a number of years. So um, a fall in the dollar index just allows, you know, me to buy the dollar for a bit cheaper, and an increase in the dollar. You know, um, basically just allows me to get basically get info on pullbacks. If you are looking to sell the dollar, right? Um, I would also say that this area is decent, especially the, the the higher area here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this supply zone right there. In fact, change that as we made lower highs, lower lows. So what you want to wait for is price to come up to this supply zone before getting short. Um, one thing to also um, no, it is that the more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes. So I think if prices come up and then kind of come back down to this demand zone, um, there could be some negative sentiment around the, the dollar. Um, and then you get obviously a break of that level, or we could just basically shoot through that level. Um, again, my bias is to the upside. So either way, I've got a plan for um, every eventuality. And what you want to do is look for bullish price action on the Dow Jones dollar index, um, and then trade the um you know any of the dollar pairs um so moving on to the 
dollar yen and the dollar yen uh, last week if we can load some bars uh, nearly came up to this uh, supply zone um, which would have been a decent short if you were looking to short the dollar um, but at the moment uh, we're pretty much in a bit of no man's land a little bit of supply coming into the market uh, and so let's go to the chart and what we have now is a bit of a supply zone here I'm not going to put it on on this chart even though there is supply here actually in fact I will but just understand that even though there is supply here it's not a strong level of supply yet you really want to see price um, kind of make some new you know break towards a, a new low beyond that swing before it's considered a strong level of supply so just keep that in mind if prices come back to this level and understand that there's a um, you know you want to see a strong supply um, the level above is probably going to be the preferred area to look for any kind of short trades if you want to buy the Japanese yen and think the Japanese yen is a bargain if you are looking to buy the dollar then you're looking for a bit of a pullback into this first zone and if you get you know some sort of price action price reaction around here um, and decent entry then that would be your first zone if not then second zone going to be down here also keep in mind that the yen strengthens in a risk off environment so if Donald Trump starts to come out and uh, you know uh, reignite the trade war um, fight that he's having with China at the moment then you could see you know a bit of a dollar sell-off as he is trying to weaken the dollar um, uh, and I don't really want to get into the reasons why kind of beyond uh, the scope of this video but uh, he does want a weaker dollar, right? In 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 his trade war to help him and and aid him in his, you know, is uh, making the U.S. globally competitive. Uh, I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, so next on the list is dollar Swiss and dollar Swiss last week. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, did come up further up into this higher supply zone and then. Bit of a sell-off um, last week. Uh, the Swiss National Bank also came out and uh, didn't actually um, increase any kind of stimulus. They kind of held fire on um, any any QE or, or monetary easing. Um, and I think this is probably just some profit taking going on. Um, I think I was maybe around about I think maybe about ten pips away from my actual profit target. I've been uh, long from here. From down here, I think the uh, 0 0.974 level the profit target is right just before that uh, one round number. So let's see. Um, I'll trail my stop up anyway, so I can't lose from here. But anyways, um, waiting for you know if you're looking to for a sell, then pretty much now is the opportunity. And let's go to the charts. So now is going to be a bit of an opportunity potentially on a lower time frame to look for some shorts right here. Um, if you are looking for any kind of long trades, then you are looking at a probably the better level would be down into this 98 uh, to number before um, 0 0.982 number before getting um, long as you've got a confluence of you know some support and resistance in that in those areas of demand as these whole you know um, higher highs higher lows create demand zones yeah because this is an absolute bargain proven by price action etc yeah I had, I had someone say something made it make a comment like that supply and demand you can't use them for uh, you can't use this technique for in this strategy for um, trending markets only ranging markets which is which is absolute nonsense but anyways um, yeah, so basically wait for a pullback into this area here. If you want to be a buyer of the dollar and you think the dollar's a bargain here, um, and if you think the, the Swiss franc is a bargain at this moment, then waiting for pullbacks into the supply zone and possibly up into that higher level, that one um, parity round number. Um, right there. Uh, the next on the list is dollar CAD. And again, last week we had 
nice not really move anywhere to be fair didn't come up into this um, this area of supply um, it just kind of went sideways so again I don't think the analysis has really changed much on the dollar CAD it's literally if you want to get short you'd have to wait for price action to come up into the highs before looking at short trade if you're looking at any kind of long trades um, although technically we do have um, a demand zone there we do because prices have made a higher high um, I would probably if I was going to trade that it would have to be at the absolute low of that demand zone so around that 1.325 1.321 or 20 level I'd probably say around there before looking at getting long so on a lower time frame if you're trading like the one hourly it would be basically back down into this area where you've got resistance, resistance, bit of support there, etc. That would be the level if I was looking to trade and looking to buy the dollar against the Canadian dollar. And then your next level is going to be a bit further down at these lows. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar and New Zealand dollar. Um, again, last week I was actually expecting. I took a trade here on a lower time frame and took profit pretty much around here. And um, in the lead up to the um, the announcement of uh, of a potential interest rate cut, I kind of expected the dollar to kind of weaken um, in this area and probably maybe you know go up a bit further where I was looking to probably getting short again. But you know things happen. You know uh, I'm not in the business of you know predicting price so just uh, look at what price does and then um, you know take the trades and manage my risk but as we've seen the New Zealand dollar has been fairly weak fairly fairly weak actually very weak this week and I think it's probably uh, again another buy the rumor sell the fact type situation where um, they've got an announcement this week I think it's on GDP and um, or a statement and uh, I think that the, that the New Zealand dollar is uh, weakening for uh, you know potential buy but um, I was expecting prices to you know come up higher so I could actually um, uh, get short again but prices have gone on their way so if we're looking at a chart what we can do is delete that we do have a supply zone right there as prices have made lower highs lower lows that green demand zone right there is actually from a 2015 zone um, so I'm not too sure how you know significant that is going to be but there's probably going to be traders looking to trade you know a level that has been touched in the past but um, who knows uh, but if you do want to get long um, what I would say is actually matter of fact, let me go to Forex factor and see what what it is that is uh, going on that's it so oh it is the uh, official cash rate so they expected to hold rates and then the statement afterwards so i think that's going to be more significant um in the fact that if the uh, rbnz governor comes out and is very dovish then you could see the new zealand dollar start to sell off right but if he comes in and says well we're looking to still hold rates blah 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 blah, blah whatever then if they're less dovish or a bit more hawkish in their assessment then you could see the New Zealand dollar rally um, but your first area to get short would be obviously here and second area would be somewhere up at the highs so moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar this week um, again pound rallying on uh, sentiment really uh, no deal uh, or deal Brexit sentiment um, and comments from the EU saying that they would like to do a deal potentially uh, as had did have the pound rally this week and they, even from from last week as well so um, we are we did rally into the supply zone and uh, now we're potentially selling off and going back to that Bloomberg article um, which is Ireland puts a dampener on Brexit hopes right so um, 
basically the currency halted its two weeks gain after Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney said the mood music has improved yet there is still quite a wide gap between the UK and the European Union yeah so um, Ireland um, are a major player in the Brexit agreements uh, due to the backstop um, having to be basically sorted out and agreed so um, uh, if that isn't you know sorted out then I don't think a deal can be done so um, you know when it comes to you know the pound you know getting getting itself sorted again this is going to be very sentiment driven you know one one uh, comment from you know a, uh, a, a a politician you know could send this flying another um you know uh, another comment could send this you know you know going to the lows if anyone says that they can predict price um right now is talking nonsense um because again it's all about you know sentiment it's not based on any kind of uh, fundamentals at the moment right it's literally just uh you know who says uh things that the markets like or don't like so um as we come up into here uh, my advice if you are trading the pound is probably to reduce your risk as well um i wouldn't put on any kind of normal um risk um you know if you trade one percent maybe put on half a percent or quarter percent per trade um because again um when it comes to sentiment a lot of the uh the normal um uh, uh, or the normalities of trading where you think you know you get a, a certain entry you know really may not apply if you know what I mean so um, let's see what happens anyway we're up into this supply zone putting a decent pin bar on a lower t on a higher time frame so this could be the start of you know maybe some profit taking from anyone who got long down here maybe he's looking to take some profit at the moment um, we haven't had any kind of major pullback as well so into this level so it could be a decent pullback just um you know and we could take advantage of a pullback um if you are looking to buy the british pound then you would be looking at this first pretty first level here to look for um some long trades if you are you know trading higher highs higher lows you're waiting for a pullback and then into that demand zone before looking at getting long um next on the list is euro dollar and the euro dollar is um uh from last week uh, there was a nice uh, stop hunt set up around here and uh new bars prices have sold off into um uh, i guess the fed um announcing a rate cut prices have done pretty much the opposite you know to what the european central bank wanted which was a weaker euro but I think this is just, um, you know, the market looking for liquidity before continuing further lower. And I think it's going to draw a lot of traders into the upside. Prices may continue going higher. And if it does go higher, I'll be looking for shorts. If it doesn't go higher, doesn't matter. I'm still getting short on, you know, pullbacks if I'm looking to buy the uh the, the dollar over the euro at the moment there's nothing positive coming out of Europe economically low inflation you know uh, low consumer confidence etc etc so um, not great at the moment um, so let's look at maybe looking to update the charts and at the moment I don't think there's really anything to update um, with that in fact I'm gonna what should I do? Oh, this is an outside candle, so this is, I think, it's probably more hidden demand. I'll keep it there, and uh, yeah, we're pretty much between that range and that range. So, if you're looking for buy trades, prices, you know, come down into this zone here. You're looking for a buy, and if they, you know, go a bit higher, fresher areas of supply are better. So, anywhere around here, preferably around this one point one one two level up to the 1.116 level would be a decent short so uh that's pretty much it moving on to the euro yen euro yen last week i like this technically but um just couldn't bring myself to buy the japanese yen um uh, uh, over the euro so uh but i think what happened was it did end up reversing so anyone who did get short in that well done to you um 
so yeah we've got a situation where now we're back down into a level of demand so if you want to be a buyer of the euro against the yen and you think the euro at this exchange rate against the yen is a bargain or there or thereabouts pretty much now is the time to look for some long trades either there or you know further down into that zone there and it probably is some decent support and resistance in there might move that up a bit more yeah maybe something like that support 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 bit of resistance bit of support there so um, decent for a you know long trade at these areas if you get the you know your right kind of price action um, if you're looking for a sell trade technically now this has created a supply zone so let me just move this down to here so there's your supply zone but just bear in mind that you know it's an area that has been touched once twice you know kind of consider that twice so if it comes up again just be you know weary that this is a weaker area of supply based off of past you know the, the, that level being touched that exchange rate being touched several times in the past uh so going on to the aussie dollar and the aussie dollar at the moment um there was a bit of a demand zone problem is, is when you're buying demand at the highs it literally you are buying at the highs so you think about where the smart money made their money bought here you know you don't want to be the person buying at highs even though this is a demand zone just be aware that you know have some spatial awareness of where you are potentially buying so um prices this week even though there was a demand zone a bit of demand there prices pretty much falling away um the dollar getting stronger uh, the aussie dollar getting weaker so looking at the aussie dollar what we can do is delete this and create some supply so from a supply zone perspective that's decent what you want to wait for is price to come back up to here before looking at short trades um, or if you are looking to buy the Australian dollar then you're looking at a level here again just to let you know that this level has been touched once twice so a third time isn't necessarily the uh, the greatest um, you know level to look for a buy trade um, but you never know you could see um, some bullish price action and also there could be some new sentiment that does drive the Australian dollar um, you know longer and then there could be some negative sentiment that you know that weakens the US dollar so um, at the moment I think we're probably in this price range between the uh, 0 0.667 level and then the 0 0.689 or 6, 0 0.69 round number so uh, again looking for looking to buy the US dollar this is going to be the first area to look for short trades and finally we have the australian dollar us i'm um, sorry australian dollar japanese yen so uh here we are and we have come back down we'll just push through that demand zone there was a little bit of hidden demand there did react a little bit but i think the uh, the australian dollar um got weaker towards the uh, the end of the week potential profit taking um or maybe just a shift in um in sentiment so the Aussie dollar I'm going to delete this demand zone right here and there is some supply right there so again pretty similar to the Aussie dollar waiting for move back up here if you want to be a buyer of the Japanese yen you think the Japanese yen is an absolute bargain at this price at the moment buyers of the Japanese yen have pushed prices you know in their favor so pull back may prove that again if you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar at the moment the only really way to do that is from a supply and demand perspective is looking for a move all the way down here and then looking for any kind of buy trades at the moment so those are your options and we come to the end of 
the analysis. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your colleagues. Comment below and I'll try and get back to you um, as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, take care and have a great trading week.